If you only had 24 hours to explore Tampa, Florida, what areas would you visit and what would you do? That plan is gonna look very different based on why you are visiting Tampa and what you're hoping to accomplish. But today, I'm covering everything from the beaches to the burbs. I'm showing you downtown, the Riverwalk, and don't worry because I'm not skipping over the hidden gems. Along the way, I'll share with you what my perfect 24-hour itinerary would look like. And for those of you thinking about living in Tampa, I'll go deeper than the typical tourist stuff. So make sure to stick around. Many people visit Tampa Bay and head straight to the beaches, never fully experiencing all that our area has to offer. We have everything from cheap thrills to major attractions, and most of you don't know about all the small towns that we have surrounding the city. For those of you thinking of moving to Tampa, Florida, that's where your 24-hour visit might take you, and I'll make sure to cover those areas on the back half of this video, but let's get things started over in the heart of the city, and I might even stop a few people on the street today to ask them what their suggested must-have Tampa experiences would look like. If I was visiting Tampa and wanted a jam-packed 24-hour experience, I would suggest on first figuring out your evening plans and working backwards. Tampa is a major foodie city, so if you had enough time to plan far enough in advance, you might think about grabbing a reservation for dinner at one of our top spots. Burns Steakhouse is a Tampa staple known for its perfectly aged steaks, one of the largest private wine collections in the world, and you can't miss the internationally famous dessert room to cap off the night. And I can't say it's a foodie city with only one suggestion, so how about a few more? Tampa is lucky enough to have a great selection of restaurants, but I always like to refer to the Michelin Guide for guidance. This list was just updated, so make sure to check it out and notice we have a few of those special Michelin stars just for you. Wink, wink. Now, let's say you're visiting Tampa and you're a sports junkie like myself. Tampa has four major sports teams, the USF Bulls, and we host spring training, so with a little luck on our side, you could replace that fancy dinner with a good old hot dog and a cold one. You wouldn't think hockey and Florida would be a good match, but let me tell you, Tampa Bay Lightning fans are serious. And now you can pregame right across the street because the Yard House just opened up and they have over 130 beers right on tap. If planning isn't really your forte, that's okay, not all is lost. I always tell folks to check out the local calendar of events on our Instagram page as we post the top weekly things to do. And almost every week there is a concert, a major comedy act, festival, Broadway show, or celebration of some type going on and you could easily get a last minute ticket. Any of these would be good examples of something you could do in the evening, but I have to tell you, while all are great, none of these would be in my perfect 24-hour Tampa trip, which I will tell you what that looks like near the end of the video, but I'm right outside of this building, which could be the start of my perfect visit. Built in the 1800s, this building has undergone several transformations over its lifetime, but today it houses a collection of businesses that include a restaurant, shop, bookstore, and co-working spaces. Known as Oxford Exchange, it's designed as a gathering place, and you'll notice it has a common area with lounge chairs and seating for you to enjoy coffee and tea as you converse with others. And I would also strongly consider grabbing breakfast here as the menu is fantastic and it never disappoints. When I visit a new city, I enjoy trying out the top spots that you can usually get from food critics, but there is nothing better than asking a local for the hole-in-the-wall hidden gems. And if you truly want to experience Tampa, then you have to visit a Latin cafe. Tampa's roots have a ton of Cuban and Spanish influences, so if you want a taste of Tampa, you have to grab a cafe con leche and fresh pressed buttered Cuban toast. Many of our local cafes serve it up, but for the popular spots, I would suggest the West Tampa Sandwich Shop or Los Gringos. And don't be surprised if when you visit, you see a ton of Tampa's best because the old timers, they meet there every morning to talk politics, sports, and the happenings of the city. Now, this is a good time for me to hit the pause button just for two seconds and let you know that I am a local realtor. So if you're planning to move to Tampa, reach out to my team because we wanna be your local resource. And if you like what you're seeing in this video, make sure to subscribe and visit our channel for more content. Now that your bellies are full and you can start your day, this is where things pick up speed and you'll have some hard decisions to make. At this point, you already know your evening plans because we started there. You scooped up a quick breakfast and have the entire day ahead of you. If you haven't figured it out, Tampa is known for its endless things to do. So now it's all about you and how you wanna proceed. If earlier you chose a nice dinner, then we can get a bit more adventurous during the day. If you chose something more active in the evening, like a ball game, maybe it makes sense to take it easy in the afternoon. Either way, let's explore all the options 
and you pick your pace. I'll start with the obvious choice, the beaches. Tampa Bay is known for having some of the best beaches in the entire country, and we are here on Clearwater Beach to show you exactly what I'm talking about. If it was my wife, she would lay out on a beach chair, catching some sun with a nice book and totally unwind. Me, I'm a bit more active, and I would probably go for a jog, then cool off with a nice swim, followed by walking up to one of the best beach bars right here to grab an adult beverage. Most of the time, my kids are with us, so finding shells and building sand castles with my little one, followed by soccer with my nine-year-old, is a must. Then for lunch, I would head right back up to the beach bar, which is a staple. That would be Frenchies, and grab a fresh grouper sandwich because this is Florida after all. The beauty in our beaches is that they are open all year round, and you can find us out here with the same plan even in December. Yeah. All right, so if you had to make a suggestion to the folks, if you had 24 hours in Tampa and you wanted to explore the areas, what are one or maybe two things that you would suggest as a must do or see? You know, living here for the past 18 years, I'd probably say, you know, of course, going out to the beaches. We have beautiful beaches all around Tampa Bay. Yep. And, um, you know, I play hockey as well, so I would say go to a Lightning game. They're great experiences. Everybody's there. It's always fun. You know, we have a great team as well, so. All right, so we quickly grabbed Andrew, who is uh, down here from Kansas City. And I said, hey, you know, you're visiting. So what's one thing that, that really drew you here that if you had to put it on your quick trip or 24-hour itinerary that you've experienced, what's the one thing that you would suggest to folks to uh, experience? Well, listen, we came down from Kansas City just to get away from the kids and from work and just to enjoy the beach. The beach down here in Clearwater is amazing. It's our second time here, and we couldn't wait to get back. Next on the list of options, I would have to suggest the Tampa Riverwalk. This could also fit your evening plans, but I'll touch a bit on that later. For now, just know that the Tampa Riverwalk is the biggest game changer for our city as it connects two and a half miles of restaurants, museums, attractions, parks, and hotels, all with beautiful waterfront views as it winds from the Northern Anchor at Armature Works all the way into our downtown, ending with the Florida Aquarium and the new Water Street area. If you were to explore the Riverwalk, I would park at Armature Works, which essentially is a massive food hall, and make my way south by renting a bike, scooter, or hopping on the water taxi. My go-to stops along the Riverwalk, if you need a break, would be the Sail Plaza, the Water Street, and you can end things at Sparkman's Wharf. For more on the Riverwalk and things to do in our downtown, check out these two videos I shot that explain both in detail. If you made it through Tampa's downtown pretty quickly, then jump on the Cross Bay Ferry or drive over the bridge to St. Pete's downtown and check that out. It is loaded with places to visit and all within a nice concentrated area. I would suggest parking near the St. Pete Pier and grabbing the free trolley. You can see everything in a short trip and it works similar to a hop on, hop off with a great guide. If you're a thrill seeker, you don't have to head to Orlando to visit a theme park because we have our Busch Gardens right here in our backyard. Busch Gardens has the wildest roller coasters and you sort of get the best of both worlds because it's African themed with animal encounters and a safari ride. So it's almost like an amusement park and a zoo all in one. If I haven't hit this on the head for you with these suggestions, after we wrap up, jump over to my channel and check out these two videos that cover the 75 reasons to love Tampa and the top 50 things to do in Tampa. And you're sure to find something you'll like. And make sure to stick with me or just fast forward because I think you might like my perfect 24 hour itinerary in Tampa. Can I borrow you for one quick second? All right, so if you could make one suggestion for folks that are visiting or they're gonna be in Tampa for 24 hours, what's one good suggestion for them to explore and experience? I would say get a day pass at the Don Cesar at St. Pete Beach. That's a good one. All right, so what would you suggest to somebody if you had 24 hours in Tampa, what's one thing they would have to put on their list to do? Definitely check out Armature Works. There's always something going on for the entire family and it's great to be outdoors. Now, as I mentioned during the video's intro, I get a ton of calls from folks moving here and they ask me, Adam, where should I live? What are the good areas outside of the city? And since most never venture out that far, I think it would be neat to also show you some of our nearby towns and suburbs and share with you what some of them offer. To the north of Tampa, our most popular areas would be Odessa, Lutz, and Landa Lakes, as well as Wesley Chapel. Each of these suburbs have their own uniqueness about them, but Wesley Chapel, Florida is by far the most popular of the bunch because it has the highest concentration of shopping, dining, and entertainment options to go along with a plethora of new communities. Living here, residents don't have to travel far because everything is right at your fingertips. Locals love visiting the shops at Wiregrass, The Grove, and for the real shopaholics, 
you can grab a deal at the Tampa Premium Outlets. If you have kiddos, they will love ice skating or playing hockey at Avent Health Center Ice, taking a sports camp at the Wiregrass Ranch Sports Campus, or visiting the Epperson Lagoon to cool off in the summer. Adults can grab lunch and a cold one at the Florida Ave Brewery, meet some friends at Tiger Woods Pop Stroker, enjoy an evening at a comedy club, or go axe throwing. Living here, there is a little something for everyone, and the same can be said about those communities. Families with kids love communities like Epperson because who wouldn't want to lounge out beachside at the lagoon while the kids run off with friends having a blast? You can scoot around on the golf cart and it's super easy meeting neighbors with a full calendar of events. And this is just one of many communities in the area. Moving to the southern suburbs, Brandon and Riverview have plenty to do, great neighborhoods, and it's a quick drive into the city, but a neighborhood that catches a ton of attention is Waterset down in Apollo Beach. This area is known for having easy access to the bay if you like to get out on a boat every now and then, and you can't beat a community like Waterset to call home. It has four community pools, tons of trails to get you outdoors, dog parks, a clubhouse, a sports complex, and a new mixed-use venue called The Yard is on its way giving locals a new option for dining and retail. If you were only visiting for 24 hours and curious to see new construction homes, these two areas would give you a good feel of the new home builders we have in Tampa, along with what our master plan communities feel like. But let's say you don't want cookie cutter. Let's say you want an old Florida feel with access to the beaches and a quaint town where you could walk or bike to things. Then look no further than the small town of Dunedin. Dunedin's a popular town that's only a short trip across a bridge to Honeymoon Island State Park, which has a great beach. Or if you like boating, my favorite is to relax at the sandbar near North Anclote because the water is absolutely perfect. Dunedin is quaint and quiet area with a charming downtown Main Street area that's perfect for a nice stroll to dinner or crawl to a nearby brewery. The area is known for its laid back Florida vibes and it has an abandoned railroad track that was converted into a bike trail that's perfect for locals that want to scoot around. For more info on this area, check out this video where I took a deep dive into the community. Now the Tampa Bay area has so many great places to live that it caters to everyone from millennials to retirees. If you're interested in learning more about the areas and lifestyles, hop over to my channel and check out the videos like these that break down everything for you. But now I wanna to get to the good stuff. I wanna get you what you've been waiting for, my perfect 24 hour Tampa itinerary. I look to start my mornings off with a nice breakfast, so I have two options for you depending on the mood that you're in. If I woke up hungry and wanted a nice sit down meal, I would have to suggest daily eats for breakfast. It's a modern version of a classic diner with a menu that is to die for. It has an all day menu and tons of breakfast options that include breakfast bowls, Benedict's and griddled delights. On a much lighter note, if you want a quick breakfast that is not only a Tampa tradition, but also a way to really rev up your engine, I would go to La Segunda Bakery in South Tampa because they have the best Cuban toast in Tampa. They were established in 1915, and most of the time, if you go to a Latin cafe and get some Cuban toast, it's because it came from them. So why not go directly to the source? And if you've never had a cafe con leche, it's Cuban espresso with steamed milk, and it will fire up your morning. If you know that you're going to have a long day, you might want to grab that Cuban sandwich to go as well, because it's also one of the spots in Tampa to get the best one. Now that takes me to my next thing to do, and this could go one of two ways. If I wanted to relax because I had a big evening plan, I would go to St. Pete Beach, and on the cheap, I would relax at Pasa Grill Beach. On the other hand, if I had a nice budget to play with, I would pamper myself with a day pass at the Don Cesar on St. Pete Beach. The day pass gives you access to the pool area, the private beach with cabanas, and you can lay out and totally unwind. To top it off, I'd grab a nice drink from the bar and relax while enjoying the live music they typically have playing poolside. Now, if I knew I was gonna have an easy going evening like a nice dinner, I would kick things up a notch and make it an adventurous afternoon. With some planning, I would charter a boat and hit the water for a few hours. My wife once chartered a fishing boat for my birthday and a few years back, we went fishing from around 8 a.m. to 11 in the morning. Then the captain stopped at a sandbar in the middle of the bay and cooked up our fresh catch, serving it right there. Not having the kids with us, we got to relax and enjoyed a few cold ones with our fresh snapper sandwich while feeling like we were just in the middle of the Caribbean. You could easily do this and be back to freshen up by two or three in the afternoon. For the evening plans, the simple route would be to get reservations at a restaurant, but I like a little adventure. The other night we had an unplanned babysitter as my mom scooped up the kids for a sleepover and my wife and I weren't gonna waste a night home. We got dressed with no plans and headed down to the Sparkman's Wharf area. I wanted to grab a quick beer, but my wife said, Let's just go for a stroll. Secretly, 
I knew she wanted to get in a couple extra steps, but that's all good. So we left and started making our way down Channelside Drive to the Water Street area. Up until this point, my wife hadn't experienced Water Street at night and was shocked at how lively it was. And she was getting excited because there were so many new options to explore. Our plan was to pop in and out of as many places as we can just to see what we liked and essentially teeing it up for a future date night. Our first stop was Bulan and we didn't get a chance to try the food, but the drinks were on point and the atmosphere was great. Then we really wanted to check out the Tampa edition because it's a new luxury hotel with a Michelin star restaurant and everyone's been buzzing about the grand entrance and the rooftop bar. Walking in, it's nothing like we had ever seen in Tampa. You're surrounded by plants and it really brings the hotel to life. Then on the rooftop, the cocktail lounge has panoramic views of Tampa's downtown, cabanas surrounding the pool area, a canopy of Bogan Villas overhead, and an amazing crowd making it one of Tampa's most scenic drink stops. While we were having fun exploring and bouncing around, I happened to work up an appetite, so we crossed the street and headed to the Pearl. Being that we were just winging it and didn't have any reservations in what is a very popular area, we were lucky enough to get two bar seats and grabbed a menu. Needless to say, Ric Flair was sitting right next to us, which makes total sense because he lives in Tampa, but the star of the show was the amazing menu and my wife was a happy little lady. We had the devils on horseback as an appetizer, which was dates stuffed with cheese wrapped in bacon. FYI, something I typically wouldn't order, but it was awesome. Then we were stuck in between the shrimp and gouda cheese grits and the short rib with horseradish mash. And let me tell you, just get both. You'll thank me later. Now this pretty much wrapped up our night, but for a quick recap, I would start the day with breakfast at Daily Eats or a taste of Tampa at La Saguna Bakery. Follow this up with relaxing at the Don Cesar with a day pass or rent a boat and hit the water. Then you can't go wrong with a planned dinner, but I would suggest winging it a bit on the Riverwalk or in downtown and seeing where the night takes you. Tampa has a little something for everyone. And if you're thinking about moving to the Tampa Bay area, make sure to reach out to my team as we would love to be your local real estate resource and check out our channel as we cover everything you need to know about living in Tampa, Florida. Thanks for joining us. And until that next video, I'm gonna catch you later. Woo!